Welcome, everyone. The big question. <laughs> Who is Noni? Noni walks and talks the experience of what she creates, you know. This is... I am... I've been doing this for the last 35 years, so that probably gives my age a little bit. And I think um, I'm also, I identify myself as a being that creates extensively, be it art, be it, you know, as, as a homemaker, as a mother, as, as a daughter, as a caregiver, as a nurturer, uh, as a feeder, as a lover, as an educator. And um, yeah, I think that that is, is the holistic noni, you know? And noni, like the noni juice, is always good for you. So that's, that's me. Yeah. We met here in this room, and noni won me over with a tart. With a tart. <laughs> Yeah. with food. <laughs> she fed me and I think you being here and this work is helping to feed. How is it helping to feed? I, I think my work, it feeds the soul in a way. It's, it's a very um, subtle but powerful and bold work. I feed. I'm, I'm known to feed people. I would feed people. People come to my house and I feed them. I'm constantly feeding and feeding. Here, have, even at work, you know, constantly, I'm, even to my students, like I'm always feeding. And I think food is is such an important um, sort of sustenance. It's it's a product. It's something that we live. We many of us eat to live. And some of us live to eat, you know. So either way, it is such an important part of our being. And, and that's one of the reasons why I use food in my work to sort of um, also uh, talk about how not just as women or homemakers or, you know, as, as people, as beings that we are feeding other people, we feed ourselves, and how food plays such an integral part in our life. And being trained as a painter, um, I, I, I find it really important to also then go back to my roots, you know, where um, I mean, in South Asian culture, we eat a lot of uh, coconut, we, we use a lot of color. It, our environment is con constantly, it's just full of color. And also because I was born on an island in Singapore, which is uh, in the Asia Pacific. So I'm, I'm, I've been displaced in so many different cultures and I've learned so much about their food culture as well and how that affects me as a woman, as, as a caregiver, as a nurturer, and, and food helps to heal, and food comes from the land. And this piece here is living, and it's going to go back to the land, because as we speak, it's turning rancid. It is breaking down, and it's just going to be composted, and it's going to go into a different system after this is all done. And then again, I'm feeding the microorganisms as well. The food, this is actually going to go into that system to feed, to feed the bacteria that we don't see. So it's a never ending product. Yeah. As we're sitting here, I can, I can, I'm breathing it in. And it's very, it just automatically has this meditative effect on people. I've seen the effect happen on others. It happens to me. What's lovely about it also is that, you know, during these times, it's a, it's definitely has a healing effect and just makes us pause. And 
You've seen different reactions yeah, from people? Totally. And, uh, and that's the reason why it's Antidote, right? We talked about this, uh, the title of the, the piece of the show. And I think being, um, the last two years have been, you know, like 18 months, we've all been dealing with so much. And, and it's almost like now we're coming back into space. We're coming back into physical spaces and everyone is on edge. Everyone is, you know, like we're nervous beings. We're, uh, you know, we don't know what's the right thing to do. We don't know, you know, even as artists, you know, as, as, as human beings, as women, we, we don't know if we're going to let our children out or we're going to, like, even if it's safe. So. It was really crucial and important to me to be able to create a piece that was inviting and calming at the same time because it's multi-sensory. This piece here is layered with so much of different, um, you, you see it not just visually, but you also smell it. You smell as, as it's going bad, as it's decaying, you smell maybe the sweetness of it. There's no sugar. It's completely edible. You can eat it. But um, you also visualize different things. And it's meditative. As I was creating it, for me as the artist, I, I speak to the work. The work speaks to me. But I also lay it out with my bare hands. And I'm bare feet. So I'm, I'm completely at ground level with the piece. So when my viewers come in and look at the work and they tell me it is so calming, you know, I, that, that's very humbling. For me, that's, that's the reason I create the work. And it's, again, it's very subjective. It's, it's almost like, like the psychological tests, the inkblot tests that we, we do, right? And it's, it's entirely up to the viewer to have a conversation with this piece and walk around the piece and you're going to be able to pick out different elements as you go around you stop maybe there might be a section that you you like or you're you're sort of contemplating or it might transport you somewhere and that could be a process it's all about navigating yeah navigating through the piece, through the space. And it, it was, you know, we talked about how, as artists, how do we come back to this? How do we come back to our practices, you know? It's, it's been, I mean, I, it could be triggering for a lot of people to also think about, oh, I, I don't want to go back into that bubble. I don't want to, like, what is normal? How do we normalize our practice as artists? You know, even so, what you make with you, you know, I sometimes it's referred to as the white cube, That's right? That's right. And I remember an artist saying to you, oh, aren't you intimidated by this space? And I thought, no, it's perfect that nothing is on the wall and we're just coming back to the land, yeah. back, back to the something to ground us. To ground us, totally. And, and it's great that I'm part of such a dynamic exhibition and you know I'm so humbled to be in your presence too you know Ted and Dizongi I, I I think this piece is it's almost it because it's going to go back into the land right and for me to be able to create a ground piece it's also it also talks about empowerment it talks about the, the culture that I come from the society that I come from and Everything that we do is so labor intensive. You know, it's, it's hours and hours and hours of laborious work that we do in quiet. It's so, it's almost like a very solitary, lonely experience that we go through. And then I, I display it, I create this work, and then I leave it. And it's living on its own. So I have nurtured this piece, I have cared for every single color that I've created, every color represents that symbolism, it talks about fertility, it talks about sexuality, it talks about how 
as, as a woman, as a female being, we, we're also this vessel that houses bodies. We help procreate, we are creating another human being and then boom, you know, that's, that's one of, so it's really important how the land gives to us and how we put it back into the land and this is all going to go back into the land. I'm very conscious and mindful of every, every type of work that I create and why I create it. So it's I important it's as a, an artist. As an artist, yeah. Hopefully all artists start yeah. to think about those things. And, and especially now, I think being, being so isolated and being, being in that bubble, you, you think about how can I just come back and, and do this really loud sort of like spectacle? Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't fair for me or for the space. It's not just about the viewer looking at the piece. I think we're all in a headspace where we want, we want to be able to navigate and process at our own pace, which is what I want to give the viewer. I want them to understand that you're coming into the space and it's usually lit with very subtle light. Mm -hmm. It is a very quiet piece, so we never have this lighting. It, when you come in, when the gallery is open on other days, you'd be able to see that. And I appreciate that. I, I appreciate the subtlety and the quietness, although the colors are so bold and they represent so many different elements of the land and, and my existence as a cultural being, you know. I thought it was important in, in the conversation and in the visitor experience that, you know, you enter in uh, the gallery to this sort of dominant piece of work <laughs> and, and that there was sort of this balance between sort of male and female and also, you know, no accident that the love lab is a part of the conversation too. Um, my favorite spot is just sort of at, at the end here looking at your work and then looking through the gallery, you know, sort of that balance that's, or that conversation that's happening back and forth. It's definitely a figurative yeah. piece. It is a figurative. People might not see that right away. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an abstract figurative piece, and that is the entry point, you know, and, and this is a, it, it is an abstraction of the female body, and that's the uterus and the womb. This is where we house the body. So the vessel there is very symbolic as the clay pot being a vessel to hold. So it, culturally, it's very symbolic, and I use that uh, with that same purpose to make it known that this is home for all the other beings. That's the center of, it's like the epicenter of everything else. And then it goes up to the spine and that's the head space. So when I have shown this, these sort of works um, in different spaces, the entry point is always as the viewer is coming in to view the work. But I deliberately decided that I was going to have the entry point over there. So it's like, you know, you're, you're entering into the female reproductive organs. And before you even get to that, you're actually going to walk through, like from the head, and you're going to walk through the whole body part. And then you're going to make a conversation with the piece before you realize that, oh, okay, this is what it is. But I try not to... Um, sort of narrate this too much. I don't want to sort of tie the viewer down because everyone comes into the show, to the exhibition with a different set of histories. We all have different you know, awareness. We're mindful of different things. We have different baggages that we have. And you're going to look at something and, and think that, you know, this reminds me of something. And, and there in itself, you're already having a conversation with the work without me having to tell the viewer this is exactly what it means or this is what I want you to think of the piece. I don't, I don't want to do that. I want them to come in with an open mind and if you think it is a landscape, it is a landscape and it is very grounding, it is very subtle, it's colorful, different, 
ethnicities, different demographics of the population are going to view it very differently, which is fine by me. It's, it's very subjective. It's like the ink blot test, right? Yeah. It's, it's going to mentally trigger, regardless of how it's going to trigger. I, I get excited when I, I hear conversations, the after conversations, when people email me and go, like, oh, this is what I thought about your work, which is then an ongoing conversation, right? And that's what this piece is about. Definitely. It's ongoing, it's living right now, it's breaking down, it's turning rancid. And because I created the work, I can smell it. I can smell the sourness. Some people are going to come in and they only smell the sweetness, which is fine. But because I created this work, I, I sort of, I've had so much of close, almost I'm so intimate with it because it's been created with like my skin and my bare hands, you know. This, these are my tools that I have used. And the only way it is, has been laid down now was also with my hands and then I've let it let it just now grow or decompose at its own pace. And I want the viewer to understand that when you come in and look at the work and you decide what you see and what you're going to take away from the work. And where is it and, and I tell I also tell them that if you see this once and this is the only time you're going to see it. I think there's a lot, you know that can be translated through the visual too. Like, you know, you're exposing yourself with this work. And I think by doing that, you can automatically connect. Yeah. And this, this kind of work automatically connects to everyone in some way, yeah. right? Because it's so, it's interactive almost. You're walking around the work. And I mean, you're so tempted to even touch it People have put their fingerprints and footprints even in the work, you know, like you, that alone, that's the first step in even wanting to connect with the work. Mm. Yeah. And I like that connection. I want, I want the viewer to understand that it should leave a sort of an impression, like question, question yourself, you know, question what this is, like the expanse of the work. Like this is probably a slightly smaller piece, you know. Um, I've, I've had a lot of very ambitious pieces that I've done. So space is always intimidating, but the moment the work goes into that space, it has a conversation with the cube itself. Mm -hmm. And this is so, it is so natural and fluid and so organic, you know. and, and it's almost like bringing, bringing what we have in the ground back up into something that is so conventional, like this man-made cold space. But at the same time, you see the warmth of the piece, right? It's, yeah, it's quite the experience. Um, if you're not here today, you definitely want to come and try to experience your exactly, work. Exactly, yeah. By just seeing, breathing it in, walking yeah. around yeah. in a three-dimensional way, for sure. Exactly, and and also I, I also want to mention that um, the, this kind of work that I've been showing has been shown in many different spaces, like areas in like places in the world, and different um, populate a sort of demographic of people. The population is going to react very differently. I'm going to change it up a little bit now. And I've always wanted to do this. I'm going to ask Noni some questions. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's watched the um, actor's studio? Yeah. There's always <laughs> 10 questions at the end. I used to love watching that show and I used to love listening to the answers. Right? Right. <laughs> do you know, like you know on the, the spot. <laughs> yeah. On the spot. So on the spot, what is your favorite word? Food. <laughs> <laughs> What is your least favorite word? Pain. What turns you on? Color. What turns you off? Cold. <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? Quiet noise. 
like natural sounds. Yeah, like when I'm I'm walking, I walk every day with no headphones. You know, that's my quiet time where I'm really one with with nature and the being. Someone once said, you know, if you're lucky enough to force yourself to get out of bed at 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning and do that walk, you smell and hear sounds that you can't explain. I mean, I'm not talking about like spirits or like, you know, but just natural, like just even the air or the, the mm. little crickets or the leaves rustling and mm. just, oh my God. Beautiful. That's my turn off. <laughs> <laughs> can't go back, yeah, can't go no, back. <laughs> What is your favorite curse word? Say oh, it, say it, I, say it. Can I say it? Yes. No, I can't say it. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Close your eyes and say it. <laughs> I, I, was, I was at, um, I had some friends over yesterday who came to see this work and um, our, our boys, uh, played soccer together, they grew up together, so you know it's been a long time that I've actually met up with them and we we went out for dinner after and and, and, and we were just swearing and we looked at each other and we're like really? Are we like cursing and swearing? And because like we never used to do that, never. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, I, if I had not been a teacher, an educator, I, I would have wanted to be like a behavioral, sort of a, a, someone who s studies minds. Mm. I'm always so intrigued. I, 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 I'm actually quite an introvert. I'm, I'm very passive like that. But when I have to go into performance mode like now, I just then jibber jabber jibber jabber. <laughs> so I'm like, you have to like stop me. But I I have such a fascination for mm -hmm. going into people's minds and understanding what are they thinking. Like mm -hmm. even as viewers, they come in and they look. I look at the expression on their face, and I'm just thinking, I wonder what they're thinking. Questioning. Questioning. Questioning yep. Right. That is something I would have done. What profession would you not like to do? Uh, I don't know. I've never really thought of that. I, I hate to say it, but maybe a politician, you know, like going to politics. I think that's like a double-edged sword, you know? Like, yeah, I, I think that's something I, I don't think I would be able to do. No. And the last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well done. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> definitely. You did it. <laughs> oh, you pulled it off, you know. You definitely did. Yeah. I, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.